Loria. If Warcraft 2 and Warcraft 3 had a baby, Loria would be a final result. Nothing is more Warcraft than Warcraft itself, and Loria is totally like Warcraft 2.5. I have no idea how they managed to deal with Blizzard's legal banhammer, but I'm glad they did. In Loria you will find two campaigns, two playable races, six unique heroes and entertaining story. Armies of Exigo. Game looks more like Warcraft, but it plays more like Starcraft because you can control up to 200 units at one time, and they are not that important when you lose one or two of them. Game also has nice differences from Blizzard games. Most of the maps have subterranean level that gives more 3D feeling to the game. Also, you can use automatic unit formations, where in example archers walk behind melee units. Here you will find three factions, the Empire, the Beasts and the Fallen. This is a great game, sadly you can't buy it on Steam or GOG.com. Grey Goo. I think we should all agree that this is a terrible name for an RTS game. It's like making first-person shooter where you fight in a war and instead of naming it Call of Duty, give it a name of Slimy Slurp or something. Of course, Grey Goo's name doesn't just pop out like this out of the thin air. One of the factions in-game is named Goo. Other two are humans and beta. As you can see, developers were not really good with the name creation process. Here each faction features a unique set of units, structures and playstyle, as well as its own segment of single player campaign. Though game was obviously inspired by Starcraft, Warcraft and Command and Conquer series, it's way slower and for the quick paced RTS lover it might be a bit painful to play. War Party. This is a strategy game where you enter a prehistoric world of dinosaurs, cavemen and magic. Build up your chosen faction, gather resources, explore the land and command them against enemy tribes and wildlife. Aside from looking really good, game has three unique factions, campaign, survival mode, skirmish against AI and multiplayer. So basically this game has everything any modern RTS should have, a must try for every Warcraft fan. Heroes of Annihilated Empires Game is quite old, but its 3D engine looks pretty damn good even now. The world of the game is living and huge, full of magic, mythical creatures, heroes and powerful forces involved in a large-scale conflict dating back to the past. The gameplay enables the player controlling one of the heroes has to lead thousands strong armies into battle, also as combat with the hero alone, making use of the entire arsenal of possibilities and powerful magical spells. The possibility to upgrade your hero, improve his abilities, find artifacts and get random quests serves to hugely diversify the gameplay. It's a great game to try. 8-Bit Hordes well, let me talk about the babies again. If Warcraft spent the night with Minecraft, nine months later 8-bit orcs would be born. This is a fast-paced fantasy RTS, very colorful strategy arcade game that is easy to learn for players of all skill levels. Collect resources, build up and defend your base, amass your army of orcs or humans and ultimately crush your opponents. 8-bit orcs features offline single-player missions, two-player cooperative missions, AI skirmish mode and player versus player mode. Multiplayer, I can guarantee this is really fun game. Lord of the Rings Battle for Middle Earth 2 game was released not only for Windows but also for Xbox 360. And that is really rare thing because you can count good RTS games for Xbox on your fingers. Here you can choose from 6 factions – Men, Elves, Dwarves, Isengard, Mordor and Goblins. If you have an expansion called Rise of the Witch King then also Faction of Angmar is added. Here you can control various heroes from the books and movies such as Legolas, Aragorn, Gollum, Mouth of Sauron and others. This is truly great game for every Lord of the Rings fan. Sadly, you you can't buy it on Steam or GOG.com. Spellforce 3 this game is not entirely RTS, it has plenty of RPG elements, but hey, the part where you strategize is amazing and it will be appealing for every Warcraft player, it's very classic. Also, game is really hard, while playing I had to reload several times, but that is okay because a lot of strategy games nowadays are dumbed down to attract bigger player base. Nothing like that in Spellforce 3, it is a great title with a great story and gameplay, sadly it's a bit expensive, it costs something around 50 euros on Steam. 
Starcraft 2. Well, I hope that everyone who played Warcraft 3 at least heard of Starcraft 2. So let me start with the fact that this game is free. Well, not entirely fully free, but free enough for you to get a grasp of this wonderful game. So what do you get for free? AI skirmishes, custom games, multiplayer battles, and most importantly, full Terran campaign, Wings of Liberty. Starcraft 2 is my favorite RTS game of all times, so I have no choice only to recommend it to you. Download it now. Why wait? Bannerman Developers of this game surely played a lot of Warcraft 3 because it looks and feels like one. I especially like the control part because responsiveness of units is very good. Sadly, game has only one faction, humans, no elves, orcs or any fantasy beings here. Though the game itself is not entirely realistic, here you will have magic sword, fight evil magic boss and slay giant scorpions. Despite the fact that this game shows nothing innovative, the classic part is done very well and you will probably enjoy Enjoy the campaign, just choose harder difficulty and you will be really challenged. That's it, we create at least two top videos every week, so subscribe for more and never miss a good game ever again. Have a nice day, bye.